Hey everyone, so I have a film review today and this is actually a 2012 film and I know I don't often do a lot of out now films, usually they're quite old but this is Wanderlust which was out on Friday the 2nd which coincidentally was my birthday so I went to see it for my birthday and I've been looking forward to seeing it for quite a while initially because, well always because Jenna Franson and Paul Rudd were the leading cast members in it but apparently Melissa Joan Hart was supposed to be in it there was this big thing around about how Melissa was going to be in the film in Gen with Jennifer Aniston she wasn't in it. I'm not really too sure what happened with that, but it doesn't make the film any less good. It is sensational. It is a 12A, and I can I can see why. Yeah, in fact, I think 12A is quite a quite a light certificate. Actually, it should be a 15, but never mind. Um, so basically, it tells the story of Linda and George, who live a quite a hectic city life. Both work, kind of. I'm not going to say any more than that. But one has a job. One has a hobby of getting a job, really. And then everything goes to pop. They somehow can't afford their mortgage and everything is turned upside down. So they're on the way to stay with George's brother and while they're there they stop off stop off at an Elysium. Which seems quite peculiar when they're greeted by a nudist, which is probably one of the best things in this actually, it's hilarious. And when they're there they realise that this life away from the city and away from technology is actually something quite desirable. And they contemplate staying there for quite a while rather than moving back to the city. And they do spend quite a lot of time there. And the whole film is basically a contact, contrast between sort of the hectic, busy, worry, worry, worry city life in the quite relaxed, throw your cares away and drink tea sort of life at the Elysium where they don't really use technology, although they do have a television. And, it's, and nothing is processed, everything is, you know, they make everything, they grow everything, they're all friends, they share everything. Quite harmonic, quite peaceful, apart from when they're off their face on drugs. And then you have the, the city life. And, you know, there are times in the film when one of them wants to stay there and one of them doesn't. And then they'll seem to switch. And I guess the message of the film is just slow down and, and you know, take a step back and don't worry so much about your your phone's broken or, you, you know, your car's broken. You know, look at, look at nature and look at the real world and what life is really about. Uh, but what the film is really about is hilarity. It is absolutely, sensationally funny. I'd read quite a few bad reviews about it before I went to see it. And I, I was like, I don't know why these are getting bad reviews, because it's absolutely hilarious. I really did enjoy it quite a lot. There are quite a few funny things, but I think my favourite bit, well, first of all, the bit where the nudist is chasing after the car is sensationally hilarious. That one I do like quite a lot. Um, it's really hard to pinpoint my favourite funny bit, because there are quite a lot of bits. It depends on your style of humour, because there are a lot of um, amusing things throughout it that cater to different sense of humours, senses of humour. It caters to different levels of funniness. <laughs> I'll dumb myself down. Um, there's a bit with the horse, which I really do like. The horse is brilliant. Uh, the bit I really like, my favourite bit out of the whole thing is um, after they've been drinking some tea and Linda starts stripping. And it's this big sequence of her basically hallucinating. There's one bit where um, George has a mouth, well, three mouths, a mouth and then a mouth on either eye, and she ends up in a tree. It's just such a beautiful sequence, really well put together, very intricate, very detailed, very clever. Scary in the sense, but it's funny scary, it's not like jump out of your seat and scream scary, but a few things happen that you don't expect to happen. And it's just great all the way through it. The plot um, is, you know, it's a great story to tackle and something that quite a lot of films do try of the whole city. Kind of an extended version of city versus country life, if you like, I guess. Kind of a slight city mouse, country mouse, kind of like that, but not like that, you know. The plot, um, it's not completely unique, but it, it does. What I like about this particular as well is there was no babies. I'm fed up of rom-coms and comedies about couples and, pro and films about couples where at the very end the problems are solved and they have a baby. Every single one that I seem to watch ends like that. So I'm not spoiling the end, by the way, because it's not part of the plot. But I'm just so glad to see a film where there is no baby. Well, hang on, there is a baby involved, but it's not the, center, it's not the protagonist's baby, so that's fine, you know. The, the cast here is great, despite the lack of Melissa. You know, Rod and Aniston have worked together in quite a few things. Friends, um, uh, the other film they did. Oh, goodness. What was it? I can't remember. But there is a film of Jennifer's where Paul's, Paul Rod's in it. Um, just not into you, I think, possibly. And, um, yeah, uh, Lauren Ambrose is in this as well. When I saw her, I got a little bit excited. She played... Um, Julie Kitzinger in Torchwood, I think she is absolutely fantastic. Her character is so, well, one minute her character is mellow, the next minute her character is manic. 
um, I really do admire her character a lot, I think she's great. And just the whole thing in general is fantastic from start to finish. It's very unique in its delivery. It's unique in the script. Um, I don't, you know, I can't see elements of any other film in there. Granted, I've not seen every film in the world, but there's nothing in there that stands out to me to be copycat-like. It is just definitely worth going to see. And I will only go into the cinema to see something if, you know, I'm desperate to see it. Otherwise, I'll wait for the DVD or for somebody else to bring me the DVD or something. I'm um, kind of like Woman in Black. I really want to see that, but I'm not overly bothered, so I'm just going to wait to accidentally watch it at some point in my life. But this one I had to see. Money well spent. Probably one of my favourite Jennifer films, because her character is not your sort of typical shut up and stop crying, get on with your life characters, you know. She's actually quite an admirable character and does some other interesting things in this. Um, but as I said at the beginning, it does have a lot of nudity, fairly strong language, not overly so, but still quite bad. Um, and there's also a baby being born, which I won't say any more about, but you can watch it and find out. But it is very good. I absolutely loved it. Do go and watch it. Ignore any of the bad reviews. I know it's had some quite good reviews as well, but the bad reviews, just, you know, ignore them. It is sensational. Please feel free to leave comments, let me know your thoughts, and let me know the Paul Rudd and Aniston film that I'm on about, because it might not be, she's just not, he's just not into you, she's just not that into you. You know what, They're, my memory is rubbish and I've seen most of her films that they all get interweaved. Um, but let me know your thoughts and I'll see you all next time. Bye!